name is Matthew McCack, and I'm here with my brother, Justin Maycat. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Room 51, where we talk all things board gaming. <laughs> and we are doing our top 51 games of all time. This episode will be our top 51 to 41 games. Yeah. So, Justin, start it off. What is your number 51? Number 51 is a... It, it hit number 51 because I've never played it physically, and I'm pretty sure it's the only game on here that I've never played physically. Mm, okay. Um, but it's not... It's a board game arena rendition of the game, which I view as a little different from, like, a digital edition okay. of the game. Uh, and it is Rallyman GT. It's a fun dice-chucking, push-your-luck racing game where you're trying to figure out, you know, how to get to the finish line first before everybody else. And you have to plan out your dice, which acts as your gears. And there's rules on, like, overtaking. You have to be an equal gear or higher gear. So there's a lot of planning and strategy around that. It's a very fun game. Lots of planning during the game. And it's a fun little dice shopping. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put any digital games on my list that I only yeah. play digitally. Uh, but I do wonder how that game will play physically. Me too. If it would be, like, yeah. fiddly or not. <laughs> but anyway, my number 51, just crank it on in there, is... The Lost Expedition. Oh, okay. Um, and now, you have to remember, we play, we made this list, like, actually a couple of months ago. Yes. So anything that we've played recently or new to us or whatever, since then, we did not edit our list or anything like that because we thought unfair advantage. Or at least I did. Yeah, we never said that. <laughs> I didn't do that. I, I thought we'd give it an unfair advantage because, like, it would be the freshest in my mind the most hype oh i agree i didn't do anything new to me but i did edit my list okay in the past two months i did nothing new to me though but yeah so my so the lost expedition is a co-op or solitaire game apparently you could play competitive i've never played a competitive yeah. but it's a survival type of game you're playing out these cards and you're just trying to survive with your three explorers and uh you have to manage your resources and one of your resources is your health points but then there's also like bullets and there's food involved and it's just awesome it's super hard to win when you play on the hardest difficulty mode uh but that is my number 51 the lost expedition yeah that game's a lot of fun uh my number 50 now is a Fun roll and write or flip and fill actually that is new to me this year. Okay. Trails of Tucana. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, that one really surprised me how much I enjoyed it. You know the way if you flip two cards, so now you have to draw a line connecting between the two tiles that were flipped, uh, and there's just a ton of thought of like, all right, what am I going for? What am I trying to connect? Do I try to go for this thing? Do I try to go for that? Oh, I want to be the first one to <laughs> complete this path. There's a ton of that going on. It's a ton of fun to me. Trails yeah. of Tucana. I need to play that one some more. Yeah. <laughs> My number 50 is Key Forge. Oh, wow. This is um, a essentially a CCG, but you buy one whole deck, and it is unique. Nobody else in the entire world, universe, anything will have that deck that you have. And I love that, that unique feel. And it gives that feel of, like, discovery, you know? like And you... It's like 10 bucks for a pack, right. or, or 15 bucks, something like that. And that's all you need, really. I mean, if you, if you if that's all you want, you could do that. I've been doing it where I buy a pack, uh, at least one pack for every set that comes out. I'm trying to keep it to just one mm -hmm. every set because I'll go nuts. Um, I do want to play the game more. Uh, it's actually fallen a bit on my list from last year, uh, but that's just because it hasn't hit the table as much. But I think it's a really fun game where you don't have to sink a whole lot of money into it right. and you have yeah. a good time uh, you're 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 you what i really like is like you choose which house you're gonna play um mm -hmm. and then it's like okay now i get to play that house's cards i could use those houses cards that i already have out on the field but i can't use any of the other houses and stuff and they're always coming out with new abilities and right. uh creatures and everything so that's yeah. my number 50 Key Forge. I am hoping, uh, or not hoping, I'm very excited to see Key Forge keep moving. The more cards that get added and everything, the more diverse the decks are going to become. Yeah. And the more different each deck will feel from each other. Because they currently do feel pretty different from each other. Don't get me wrong, they're still unique. But I think there's a level of uniqueness that each deck can have that Key Forge can hit. It just keeps coming out with new and new stuff. Yeah. So I'm excited to see that. Yeah. And I think that you could yeah. play with, like, I think they're up to, like, the fifth set. 
And you could even play up against like the first set decks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and it's balanced. Uh, uh, to my knowledge. I'm nervous that that is not going to hold up. The I longer hope it will. It I hope it will. I'm a little nervous about that. It, it, that's a tough thing. Uh, but all right. So my 49 is, again, another game that is new to me this year. I was super excited when I finally got my hands on it because it was out of stock for so long. And it is World War II in 20 minutes. I'm talking about Blitzkrieg. So Blitzkrieg is this cool, uh, not tile drafting, like you pull tiles out of a bag. Chits. Chits out of a bag. I'm trying to like think of a good way to, a, a term to use for that. But you pull a random chit out of a bag and you have to figure out where you're going to place your chits uh, on this map that displays the different theaters of war in World War II. It really does play 20 minutes. It's fairly abstract, but you still kind of feel a little bit of theme coming out there. Uh, there's these cool like upgrade special tiles from the yellow that you can add to your bat, so there's a little bit of bad building. It's a ton of fun. Plays really quickly. It it's does. nice and intense, and it's like this slight tug of war. Like, oh man, who's gonna win? Yeah. Uh, each theater and all that. Good yeah. Stuff. I never win, but that one's a good <laughs> one. Did not make my list, but I like it. Fair enough. My number forty nine is um, a Viking game, actually, uh, and it's a deck building game. I love deck building as a mechanism in games. It's probably one of my favorite mechanisms, and it is Vikings yeah. Gone. Wild. I think this game does not get enough love, uh, but it is awesome. And especially, this is specifically with the um, Elemental expansion. I forgot the exact name of the expansion, the Elemental expansion, yeah. whatever. I, I, it's by Lucky Duck Games, and it is just, you're, you, um, you're figuring out, it's based on the app, really. So you have like your town hall or whatever, and you're building constructions and everything. You could attack other players. Uh, buildings, but it doesn't hurt them all that much, really. Okay. It's mostly that it's it's a game for you without like really destroying them, uh, for the most part. Uh, I love that. But essentially, you're just trying to get the most points by building like this cool deck. You're completing missions. Uh, you're trying to get godly powers and everything. And then the elementals expansion adds on elements where um, you could have your constructions be like certain elements, which could also like help you with different abilities and, you know, just pop off and combinations and everything. It's really cool. Very so cool. that's my number 49, Vikings Gone Wild. Check it out. I do need to try that game. That is interesting. You've never uh, played it? No. You've never brought it to the table for me. Um, yeah, it's actually interesting. I feel like you also don't mention it very often. But you do actually really like it. actually just played it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, though. Very cool. And I love Death Building as well. That is, that might be, yeah, no, that's definitely one of my favorite mechanics. I don't know if it's my favorite. But my number 48, and this is why I had to make the correction of, no, you didn't, I think your list. <laughs> uh, I had to put this game on my list after playing it again within the past couple of months. And I'm talking about Flem Rouge. Okay. Flem Rouge is this fun bike racing game. And now that is actually my second racing game in this uh, this set of the uh, topic racing. One. I really do, and it's this fun bike racing game where you're trying to manage this race. The game feels like you're trying to manage your race. How are you going to get the to the finish line without being overly exhausted? How are you going to be the first one to cross that finish line? You have to manage. Uh, you know where are you going? Like, are you going to try to slipstream? Are you trying to stay behind people right now? Or are you going to try to take the head of the pack now and run off with the win, maybe? Something along those lines. There's a lot of guessing, trying to figure out what your opponent's doing. I love this game, Flamme Rouge. Yeah, I love the simplicity of it, too. Yeah, yes. Uh, my 48 is uh, a pretty popular game, but not popular with my group, because nobody ever wants to play this game with me. And I'm talking about Flick 'em Up. It is a dexterity game. It is set in a Western theme. And I'm usually not into Western themes, but I really like uh, how this game makes it. And, and it's so, like, I love dexterity games that are so, you know, kind of like um, you could do whatever you want where, like, this could be over here. It's not, like, strict, like, okay, this has right. to be, like, three centimeters away from yeah. this and then blah, blah, blah. You get to, like, build the table. The table a little bit, yeah. right? Like, you, you can that. make it as big or small as you want, which right. is cool. But there's, like, 
10 different scenarios or maybe five different scenarios, I don't remember, um, <laughs> in the game. Um, and all of them are pretty cool. We've only really played the first one where it's like a shootout where you just kind of like kill off the like three of the other cow people. Right. We um, also did the second one, I thought. Did we do the second one? Where you one? can go into the saloon and have a shootout with someone. I don't remember. Oh, maybe. Is that the second scenario? I don't know. But I would really like to try other ones where it's like, oh, the the bad guys are trying to like poison the barrels and the good guys right. are trying to not let that happen. I, I would like, I like to, to try, try that. I would like yeah. to try those other like objective stuff. But that is my number 48. Flick them up. Yeah. That one, uh, I want to try again each time it's over Save It's Welcome for me. That's That's been my problem. The last one was by accident. But then even before that, it was still... It, yeah. Yeah. I do want to try it again, though. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a fun one. But my number 47, so you mentioned for my number 48, Flem Rouge, that you love the simplicity of this game. Mm -hmm. My number 47 takes simplicity to a whole new level, and this is probably my most controversial pick <laughs> on the top 51. You like this game, uh, and if you give me trash for it, I will out you for loving I'm this gonna, game. I'm going to trash <laughs> uh, you for it. It's one that goes over really well with our group, the Mind. Terrible! No, The Mind is very fun. It's incredibly simple and it makes people upset because you're literally just trying to place numbers in order, but you're doing it without talking to each other. Yeah. And it's very fun and there is a game around it, one that feels like a legitimate game. It like is that. not an activity. Yes. You're not like sitting, I agree. you know what I mean? Like, I agree. You feel me Unlike on something like Just One. Just one feels like an activity to me. The mind, it's like, no, you're trying to win the mind. Yes. And that's why the mind hit my list. Yeah. It's just so much fun for to play with people at the table because either you're having a terrible time in playing and it's hysterical how <laughs> off you are. Or, for example, I played with Eileen and brother-in-law Sean and we were just so in sync and we were getting so hyped and we won that one. Like, I never won. <laughs> it's... It's a ton of fun. I'm uh, never in sync with anybody. Yeah, my number 47 is The Mind. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of, I, I feel like people either love that game or hate yes. that game. I think the people who hate that game hate it because it's like, how is something so <laughs> simple being a game right now? Like, I could have yeah. done this, but you didn't. Yeah, you okay, didn't. You didn't. <laughs> Here we go. My number, what are we at? 47. Now, 47. this game really slipped for me um, and it's mostly because I just haven't gotten it to the table all that much so last year let's see if I could find it I can't find it yeah it was my number 17 oh wow that but, actually is a pretty big dive yeah it was a pretty big dive but it's still in my top 51 so 47 is Dinosaur Island oh. it's a worker placement game where you're creating your own dinosaur theme park which is really really cool I do wish that it felt more like I had liberty in the game where it's like, yeah, I could create whatever I want kind of thing, but it's not really that way. You're really trying to um, maximize your points and try, you, you're, a, you're a salesperson really, you know, yeah. in the game. Like you're trying to hire the right people, get the right dinosaurs, get people over those freaking hooligans. I always pull them out of the bag. Oh, they never pay. You're kind of like a... I, I wouldn't say salesperson. I, to me, it feels more like you're just an owner. Right, you like you're I mean? you're an owner. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a business person. Yeah, you're, you you're but very business yes, tailored owner. Yes, yes, that's what it, that's what it's about. It's not so much about like I get to build whatever theme park I want yeah. or whatever. It's like no, you're trying to make money and yeah. stuff uh, in the game. But that's my number forty-seven. I really like it, and I really love the worker placement mechanism. That's another one of my like top mechanisms. So dinosaur island. It's very interesting that I fell that far on your list because it, I think it was in my top 30 last year and uh -huh. it is not on my list this wow, year. Wow, I fell off. Yeah, we and, just haven't gotten it to the table. Yeah, and that's something that has made a huge difference mm -hmm. on this list. Everything like going on, certain names are just hard to get to the table. Yeah. Your group kind of also changes around what makes it high on your list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Things evolve, baby. Yeah. But so my number 46 is... So perfectly next to the mind, in my opinion. This thing gets no love. It is called Slide Quest. Slide Quest yeah. is a very fun dexterity game. Uh, if you are playing with people that are into the game, you're going to have a blast. If you're playing with people that are like playing and they're just like, we need to stop, 
stop just oh, stop yeah. playing there then um it the game is an absolute blast though it's just pure shenanigans trying to you know you control this one lever and three other people control other levers trying to balance out the board to get this knight to move along the path and collect certain things push monsters into holes and then get to the next level it's a fun one worth checking out sly quest yeah i uh, I, I like that game it did not make yeah. my top 51 right <laughs> but it is a fun one okay yeah. cool uh, my number 46 is much better than what he just spoke about. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but it is Blood Rage. Oh, okay. This one is another one that dropped considerably on my list. And again, it's because it hasn't quite hit the table. But, oh my gosh, so it has card drafting involved. You could develop your own sort of strategy, and uh, everybody starts off the same, but then your cards that you draft, all of a sudden, like, you're a totally different clan from everybody else. Right. Right, you're going for different things. Like, you could get points for dying and going to Valhalla. You could get points for winning and not going to Valhalla. Um, <laughs> and, uh, like, getting Yggdrasil and just trying to, like, gain um, rage and everything. Rage is, like, your currency. That's, that's what allows you to play cards and stuff. So that is really cool. So that's my number 46, Blood Rage with awesome miniatures. Very nice. Okay. So my number 45 just made me realize that I forgot a pick. And I'm going to mention the pick with my number 45. So my number 45 is My Little Side. My Little Side is uh, the, I guess, children's version or family version of Side. It is a ton of fun. You can totally play that with a group of adults, in my opinion. Uh, Melissa kind of disagrees with me on that, but I think you gotta play it again, especially with the pie in the sky. I don't, I don't disagree with that. Oh, I thought that was something that you said before about my little side. No, I like it. Mm. Okay, well, it's a very fun game. It takes like the mechanics of side and really boils it down, kind of thing. Now, the reason I mentioned that reminded me of a pick was because I just realized. Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters is not on my list, and it's a game that might have made my list, and just because they are both family games, it reminded me of that, so I do want to mention that. Okay, but, that's, uh, why, that's why I was making the face, I was so confused, I was like, is My Little Side your pick, or is yeah. it no. not? <laughs> no, My Little Side is definitely my pick, really enjoy that game. Alright, that's fine, I mean, it's okay. That's a good one. That's pretty good. I, I really good. appreciate that it exists. <laughs> My number 45 is a 4X style game, and it is set in a fantasy world, essentially, and I am talking about Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Wow. Yeah, so I really, really like this game. This one would probably be higher on my list, again, if it got played more. Yeah. I've only played it, like, a couple of times, um, and I am good, terrible at it. Yeah. I am terrible at this game, but... I love that, like, each faction really feels super different, and, like, you could really go whichever path you want in terms of, like, gaining victory points and everything, right. um, and, and, and you could either, like, go for your, you know, those three main characters that you could get out onto the board, or, like, you could uh, go, like, really aggressive, or you could just, like, be an explorer, things like that. I, I love that. I love that there, there is actual exploration in this game. Because yeah. so many times 4X games do not have, like, the, the, at the exploration part. Yeah, this one um, has it. And this one has it. And I like the fantasy theme uh, usually more than sci-fi. Yeah. I, I like it even more than space. I really like space a lot, but I like fantasy mm -hmm. even more. Uh, but So that's my number 45, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Nice. All right. So, my number 44 is a game that really slipped pretty far, I believe, from uh, the first Top 51. And I think it's because when I first I made that Top 51 and put this game so high, it was new to me, and I was so hyped about it. I'm talking about Teotihuacan. Mm -hmm. So, this game, when I first played it, that was pretty much the first really heavy Euro that I played. It, or it's one of the first, and... It blew my mind. I was like, wow, the strategy in this game is fantastic. I absolutely love it. It felt pretty smooth to me. Uh, and now, though, it's just become a game harder to get on the table, which is why it slipped. But it's a lot of fun. There's like, it's a rondelle where you're really trying to calculate, like, okay, which of my dice do I want to move? Why do I want to move them? Which action do I want to take? 
there's so much option and thinking and like, all right, what resources do I need? What am I going to go for? All that stuff. I suck at the game, but it's a ton of fun. Teoti Kuta. That game did not make my list. It didn't make my list last year. I didn't think so. <clears throat> and actually, last year, I put instead Tris Magistus. Right, that's uh, right. Which also did not make my list this oh, year. Oh, okay. Uh, because those haven't really gotten played. Teotihuacan is weird, because I really like the gameplay of that game. Right. But I never want to hit the table for some reason, because yeah. like there's something so boring about it. Yeah, the game has a very boring look to it. Yeah, uh, but there's I still no love it. <laughs> real theme. Right. It's just me mechanisms, and I don't know. I I'm not into that. So, right. uh, that's what. Yeah, but I like the game when I when I'm playing it. I'm having a lot of fun. My number forty four is a game that our group really likes a lot, except for maybe a couple of us. But okay. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> They're noobs. Anyway. Uh, my number 44 is a uh, one versus all game that I also think doesn't get enough, uh, enough uh. love. <laughs> and it is not alone. It is the monster versus um, the humans, I guess. Right. And it, it's essentially like Alien, the movies, um, but like kind of abstracted down. Yeah. Uh, but essentially the monster or the alien is trying to like assimilate you to the planet. And you as the human players, that's the, that's the one... And then the other players are all human players who've come onto this planet and they're just trying to survive long enough for their rescue team to come and get them. Yeah. Um, and it is really cool. It's, it's a mind sort of game where it's like, okay, the humans are trying to, they're placing cards in, in terms of like which location they're going to go. And those locations will give them special abilities if they're not caught there. Right. Uh, so then the monster uh, has to figure out like, okay, where do they go? Who can I get? Like... Where, yeah. did, where would most of them have gone, even? Yeah. You know, like, and, and you're trying to figure it out, and then, like, you're um, also deducing where they might have gone because once you play those cards, they stay out on the, the table. So you can't go there again until you find a way to pick them back up into your hand, which is also really cool. So that's my number. What are we at? 44, 44. not alone. Now, the game's an absolute nail-biter. That's a good one. That is, yeah. All right, maybe maybe we'll see it later on. Yeah, my if list. it's not on your Who list, knows. I cry foul. Yeah, <laughs> but so my number forty three is the first of Abstract Tragedy games on my list, and it might be the only. I'm not positive. Really? Uh, and I know last time I definitely I think I had like three, but this yeah. is Hive. Uh, I guess specifically wow. Hive Pocket. <laughs> They're the same. Yeah, I think. if that makes a di I have no clue if it does make a difference. Uh, Hive is a cool one where you're essentially playing with like bugs, <laughs> these chunky tile bugs, and you're trying to uh, entrap the other opponent, your opponent's queen bee. You want to kind of encase them and not have your queen bee completely surrounded. It's really cool because also uh, you can't move a tile if you physically can't move it without pushing other tiles. So that kind of thing, you have to keep that in mind. Like, okay, there's all these different restrictions. All the bugs have different movement abilities. So you have to really try to pay attention to what your opponent can do, what you can do. Do you want to place a new tile? Do you want to move one of your tiles? All that kind of stuff creates a really fun abstract strategy game. Uh, it's always exciting for me whenever that one hits the table. So that's your only abstract strategy game on the list? I think it might be. So not even Santorini. Okay, so my number... There might be other abstract strategy games on this list. <laughs> my number 43 is a wacky style game. I love it. It is not for everyone, uh, but I think it's a lot of freaking fun. Um, and it is Fireball Island. Oh, okay. This is great for families. It's great for everyone who is willing to just have a good time and have fun, okay? Like, uh, there, there's a little bit of strategy going on because you have, like, these right. two cards, which one will I use, blah, blah, blah. Um, we have the bees expansion, which is so much fun because uh, you could like collect the honeycombs as another okay. way of gaining points. Uh, a bunch of bees could come down, uh, Volcar and everything. And um, also it has the tiger where you get to like flick it uh, <laughs> at uh, other people, which is a lot of fun. Cool. Um, so that, that expansion is really cool. I want to get more expansions. But um, yeah, essentially you're just trying to run around uh, this island and trying to get... Um, treasures and photographs and make it off the island alive uh, and get the most points 
So it is a silly, wacky, fun time. That is my number 43, Fireball Island. That is one that I have to play again. I played it once, had a good time. Every other time it's hit the table, I've been uninterested. And like, or I'm playing something else, or I have no idea why, because the, the game is such like a, like it grabs you. Like it, it looks, looks amazing, amazing on yeah. the table. It's a cool one. Oh, so you haven't played it with the expansion. No, I have not. I it's really fun. want to try it's it. It's cool. All right, though, so my number 42 is going to make you very happy, and it actually is pretty much the reason Sentinels of the Multiverse is not on my list. That plus, I haven't played it in a bit. Uh, but my number 42 is Marvel Champions. Too low. <laughs> it's a game that has really grown on me. I don't know how much higher it can go than oh, this. Boy, baby. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, it, it's a very fun game, though. Uh, it's one that I was cold on when we first started. It's one that I really only want to play at two. I might even play it solo. Who knows? But anything beyond two, it does start to take long. Yeah. Three maximum, and at three, everybody's not know what they're doing. We're yeah, not, just like go. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're not playing with we're that. Not, we're not playing around. Because uh, we play like four player games that they take. It gets to the point where you want to lose, so that the game's over. Yeah. Uh, but the good stuff about it is. You really feel the theme in it. You get to play as a superhero, and you get to kind of like build up and try to get a bunch of damage out or a bunch of healing, whatever it is. Really fun decision making in this game. If you like superheroes, uh, specifically Marvel, check it out. <laughs> Good choice. My number 42 will also make you pretty happy, I think. Ooh, okay. It is one of your, I'm sure we will see this much higher on your list. Uh, but it is a card-driven game, Tableau Builder, and I'm talking about Race for the Galaxy. Uh, I, I like the theme a lot, and it has that like old-time feel to yeah. it in terms of the artwork, which is really cool. I really yeah. enjoy that. Um, and I don't know, it's just great. Like you're figuring out your engine, and it's like, okay, I could have this combo go off. Uh, there is a lot of symbology. I came out with the Teach the Teach for this game specifically for second edition because it comes with an offer uh, an awesome reference sheet i think it does yeah um and once you get it you're like oh this game's actually pretty simple it's yeah. not that bad it's actually not that complicated of a game right um but yeah you're essentially you're just trying to get the most points uh by building up your tableau of cards and uh it's all like space themed you're developing you're settling you're Warring. <laughs> I don't know. But that's my number uh, 42, Race for the Galaxy. Very good pick. I definitely I definitely like that one a lot. Yeah, you have rolled. Right. <laughs> so my number 41 is a game that you don't like, but I don't think you hate it. You don't hate this game, but you don't like it. Right. Uh, and I'm talking about Planet. Planet is a ton of fun for me. Uh, it's very King Domino-esque in like, the tile lane not like the exact same it's not the same math or anything on how to win but you're trying to you know connect tiles of the same type and trying to have the largest so that animals will come and inhabit your planet and then you want to have you know the most victory points at the end based off of the amount of animals that you have inhabited your planet plus the uh you you get a secret objective that's telling you what type of planet you want to be so if you want to be very like ground oriented or mm. ice oriented blah 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 uh that kind of stuff it's very fun and i love how the physical planet that you're placing the tiles on first off how it looks second off that it's not a pure gimmick to me it actually makes it kind of harder to figure out where you want to place your tile it makes it a little trickier yeah the biggest difference i think between king domino and planet is that king domino is fun all right maybe she does hate it <laughs> So. <laughs> I don't hate it. I, I think that it's not for me, but I can see why other people enjoy it. Right. Because they're boring people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't like that game. Uh, but I think that it's a good game that I just don't like. Fair enough. My number 41 is, and so this is the last game for yes. this list, right? So my number 41 is a worker placement, another Viking-style game. And, I'll call, uh, and I'm talking about Champions of Midgard. And this is hitting the list even without us having played the Valhalla expansion. Okay. Uh, we have it. We haven't played with it yet. 
Um, and I'm really excited to try that out because apparently, like, people love that expansion. It, like, makes the game for them. I already like it without the expansion, to be honest. Um, you're chucking dice. I love chucking dice. Uh, whoever has watched Room 51 before knows that I'm a dice chucker. Yeah. Um, so you, you're, like, gathering up which of the dice you want, like, axe people or spear people, whatever, right. um, swords. And, and you're going up against monsters and everything, and you're gaining resources and all that stuff, you know, like, worker placement things, but with a theme, and it's yeah. cool, and uh, you might die along the way. Uh, but I, I know in the Valhalla expansion, when you die, it's not all is lost. Like, you actually could gain things right. back, which was uh, part of, like, what people's like biggest concern about the game was because they're like well i did this and i lost and so now i'm just out you know and uh, i lost because i got unlucky and i'm like i don't know i haven't felt that really it's like i i allocated what i allocated and i, I went in knowing that this is a, a thing i'm risking something you know right. but i i'm i'm excited to play with the valhalla expansion so that's my number 41 champions of midgard yeah and that is the end of this episode thank you so much for watching or, and or listening. This is we're gonna be continuing next week with our next uh, ten right. segment. Um, but anyway, this has been Room Fifty One. Catch you next time. <laughs>